This video is brought to you by Straight Goods News, Canada's alternative online news source. Visit straightgoods.ca. We are all here today to commemorate the untimely death of evidence in Canada. After a long battle with the current federal government, evidence has suffered its final blow. Between the sweeping cuts to federal science programs, the legislation changes that we saw in Bill C-38, and the muzzling of scientists, the injuries to evidence have just been overwhelming. Today, we have chosen to celebrate evidence. Yeah. To do so, we've invited a number of speakers from the scientific and NGO communities to deliver eulogies that I hope will help us understand the importance of evidence in Canadian society, as well as highlight what some of the main injuries to evidence have been. In the interest of audience patience, we've asked the eulogist to keep the eulogies very short. Uh, and if they go over, Scott will be waiting to yank them off the stage. <laughs> yes. With that, I will turn the microphone over to Dear our friends, first eulogist. We are gathered here to mourn the demise of science, a devastating loss that will reverberate in the daily lives of Canadians for years to come. Today, with great sadness, I reflect upon the passing of Canada's experimental lakes area a decorated soldier who lost the battle to fight to protect Canada's fresh waters, its lakes, its fish. Right. On May 17th, the Experimental Lakes was found guilty of innovative, cost-effective scientific research. <laughs> its punishment, a death penalty by the Harper government. The lakes sit nervously on death row, marked for execution at the age of 44. Born in the 60s, during a decade of hope, the Experimental Lakes became an explorer, discovering important connections between the activities of people and the rest of nature's living web. It was spawned by a forward-thinking government who recognized the value of science-based evidence to find solutions to its problems. The Experimental Lakes propelled Canada to the very forefront of aquatic science. Its 58 small lakes laced across northwestern Ontario offered a living laboratory to study unlike any other in the world. The best scientists from around the world flocked to these Canadian lakes to, to ask questions that could not be asked elsewhere. Its first mission in life was to study a dying Lake Erie. The lakes led us to understand that the phosphorus making our laundry white was also clogging waterways with algae soup. The evidence led detergent makers to change their formulas and our lakes recovered. Yes. At age eight, the experimental lakes tackled a new problem. They uncovered that acid rain from burning coal was killing the base of aquatic food webs, leaving fish to die of starvation. Again, evidence led to changes in air pollution regulations and our lakes recovered. As a young adult, the experimental lakes got down to work with hydroelectric utilities to teach them how to design better reservoirs. In the years to follow, the lakes discovered that hormones in sewage feminize male fish, yeah. that mercury emitted from smokestacks accumulates in fish as a human neurotoxin. Now, on the verge of its untimely death, the experimental lakes are grappling with unresolved problems, such as how climate change alters lakes and how synthetic nanoparticles put on our clothes to kill bacteria may be a new threat. The lakes may have answered these questions in time to prevent great human and environmental suffering as well as economic hardship. But alas, the lakes are marked for death. Today, we mourn the experimental lakes. But moreover, we mourn the blindfold of ignorance imposed upon our once great country. Yeah. Yeah. With fear and trembling, 
we enter a two plus two is five universe. Thank you. Fraser University. This is going to be easy, obviously. So, a death of evidence rally is actually quite funny, but I think all of us here are deadly serious. Um, in an era of global climate change, we must, there's nothing we can do but behave as responsible adults. Thank you. We are facing serious issues with our water, yep. with our food, yep. and with our environment. Yes. We have to discuss these issues as adults. Yes. yes! Nuclear power may be worth the waste. All species may or may not be equally important for maintaining healthy ecosystems. Really? Carbon taxes may or may not be the best way to wean our society really? off of carbon uh, fossil fuels. But the only way that adults adjudicate these sorts of things is with evidence. Evidence... Yes! You know all this, but evidence is the way that adults navigate reality. To deny evidence is to live in a fairy world. And if you're four years old, it's a wonderful place to be. But if you're a responsible adult in charge of getting milk to the shops, day after day, you must deal with evidence. And you've already heard uh, the point, which is quite an alarmist point, that when countries engage in fantasy, it's called state propaganda. And it sounds alarming when you say it, it sounds alarming when you hear it, but I think we have to start calling a spade a spade. Well, I'm glad you agree. Um, so recent actions by our government, which Katie um, highlighted, and which you'll hear more about, um, suggest that the government is actually retreating from reality. And Professor Jeff Hutchings um, will put some meat on the bones of that contention in just a moment. I just want to end by saying that Canadians must be seen by the world to be behaving as adults. As we were before. The risks of living in a fantasy world at this point in history are very grave. This is funny, but today is not a joke. So, Professor Hutchins. Amen.